Stand by for the President of the United States. Colonel Gravy, can you hear me? Yes, sir, Mr. President, we hear you loud and clear. What happened? Can you... can you guys hear me up there all right? We hear you loud and clear, Mr. President. Loud and clear. Well, let me just say... Uh, Commander Graby and all the rest of you all were, I'm here with a lot of the young astronauts and uh, some of the older astronauts, as a matter of fact, <laughs> four, of the, four of the crews here in the White House complex, and we just called up to wish you well. The Vice President is with me. Admiral Truly is with me. And uh, we just want to get from you all how it's doing down there. A lot of these kids want to get going and get out to Mars. And you got any advice, first of all, for these young guys here, young kids, boys and girls? Well, certainly, Mr. President, for any uh, young astronauts that want to pursue a career as an astronaut, they ought to be emphasizing math and science in their studies and just doing as well as they can. Uh, it's a long, hard road to get there, and uh, it takes a little luck along the way as well, but it's certainly worth the effort. We've been talking a little bit about the contribution that these journeys make to science. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, in, in layman's terms, please, about the... Uh, experiments that you all are conducting. Well, sir, let me turn that over to Norm Tiger. He's our payload commander here on my right. Well, Mr. President, uh, taking the uh, experiments to orbit is an excellent way to do uh, experiments in some areas of science, and it makes uh, this whole journey well worthwhile. The two principal things that uh, are areas that come to mind are uh, physiology, both uh, plant and animal, and crystal growing and uh, other uh, material science experiments. And we have some 55 experiments, I think, in the IML complement. Most of those are working even as we speak. And it is our plan to do some more TV, some more explanation later on about uh, some more details of that science. Well, that is very interesting. Now, if you guys have a couple of more minutes, we don't want to detract you from all this experimentation. But it might be fun if one of these young astronauts, or maybe a couple, would like to... Here comes my man. Uh, he's back. This guy just gave a great speech here. Tell, what, tell him your name and see if you got a question for him. My name is Michael Frisbee, and here's our question. What's it like in zero gravity? You get that? The question, as we understood, was what... Yes, sir, we understood the question. What's it like in zero gravity? And I'll turn that over to Bill Reedy, who's on Bob's left. It's great. Just floating around and everything. And uh, a lot of things, it just makes a whole lot easier. Aside from putting your pants on both legs at the same time, it's, uh, it's easy to translate back and forth and uh, makes it a whole lot easier to do a lot of the science because any particular orientation you choose works the same as uh, any other. <laughs> What's he doing? It makes it all very clear. Thank you. Um, <laughs> any other? You come on. You come up and ask one. This is a rare opportunity. Fire away. Um, I wanted to know. Um, so I, I wanted to know um, what was your favorite experiment you've taken up so far. Well, that sounds like a good question for Steve Oswald, the pilot, to answer. Steve's over here on Bill's left. Well, actually, I guess I'm not sure that being uh, in the front of the bus, we're working the experiments all that hard, but we've got the iMac camera board. And Bill and Ron and I have been having a great time taking those movies that, that you see on the big screen. And we're taking pictures right now for, uh, for a movie that'll be coming out here. Uh,
but uh, you can see you can quite easily do it with just fingers. The uh, camera probably weighs as much as Roberta, who's manipulating it right now, and you can see she has no trouble at all with it. That's great. <laughs> you have one? I was president the one crew member. Which one do you like better, being in space or being on Earth? Well, I'd like to introduce our Canadian payload specialist, Roberta Bonder, who will be glad to answer that one. <laughs> well, actually, living, living uh, both in space and on the Earth really makes you appreciate uh, the good and the bad of both. I think right now we're enjoying very much the limited opportunity we've had so far of being up here. We've certainly enjoyed looking back at the Earth during our our, our brief moments when we're not in the lab working the sciences, and uh, we're really looking forward uh, when, to our return to Earth to bring back all the scientific information and all the enthusiasm and experience that we've gained in this flight. So for, the, for all of us, I think right now we're just enjoying where we are, and we're going to be enjoying where we're going to be when we come back. And I think it's just great to have had this opportunity to be flying uh, with this great crew. Dr. Bondar, this is not a young astronaut. This is the president speaking now, but I, I just want to say how how pleased we are that uh, you representing Canada are a part, a fundamental part of this. I think it's a wonderful thing, and I think in a wonderful way it shows the strength of ties between our two great countries. So uh, I understand the Prime Minister, my friend Brian Mulroney, called. Did he actually get through the other day? Uh, that was right about the time we were having our briefing uh, just uh, near lunchtime, and uh, instead I had a lovely telegram from him, and he wished us all well, and uh, Godspeed. Well, keep up the good work. Now, we got, if you got time for one more question, we got a real eager one right here. Front of the line. Here we go. Let's see if you can get so they can... I wonder how you feel the space. I think the question was, how do we feel in space? Yeah. Well, in space, it uh, takes a little bit, a bit of time to get used to it. Um, when you first get up, you might feel just the slightest bit queasy or so, but by about today, this is our third day in space, we're beginning to adapt pretty well. I think you can see we all feel pretty comfortable up here. So after you get over the initial adjustment, you can live in space quite well and do things that you do on Earth. I have a rather... Well, some of the uh, older astronauts... Some of the older astronauts are actually in space now, and uh, anything that can give you the enthusiasm that a kid has has got to be a great experience, and I feel like I'm about 12. Well, we go, we go, you go through him. You go ahead. What planets have you seen? What planets have you seen? Well, of course, we got uh, the world's greatest view of, of our world, but uh, on some of our night passes, we could see uh, Saturn and Jupiter and Mars and Venus. It's really spectacular up here. Hope we could go to uh, Mars here one of these days. Well, we're going to keep trying to get this program geared up to do just that, and maybe, just maybe, Colonel, uh, one of these kids here today will be a part of that. Sooner, maybe later, but I'll bet one of them will be a part of that mission. But listen, I'm told we gotta we gotta run on. But I uh, we got a lot of eager questioners. But unfortunately, I guess we don't have the time. But we certainly want to wish you well. Your fellow astronauts are standing here uh, quietly in the shadows, and I know that they are wishing you well. The successful conclusion of this productive journey, and you have our blessings and our support. And uh, keep up the fine work. You're on the cutting edge, and you're setting a great example uh, for the rest of our country, the rest of the world. Congratulations, and thanks for taking the time out. Well, thank you, Mr. President. We certainly want to thank you for taking the time. I want to wish all the young astronauts luck in their careers.
the worldwide television audience for today's game is estimated at around 750 million people. But what about the audience out of this world? Joining us now live from the Space Shuttle Discovery in orbit some 163 nautical miles or 3,300 football fields above the Indian Ocean on the opposite side of the planet from Minneapolis, our shuttle commander, Ron Gravy. He is the gentleman in the... Uh, in the red skin hat. I wonder who's <laughs> pulling and part, Greg. Pilot Steve Oswald. <laughs> Welcome to the Super Bowl today, gentlemen. Uh, tell us, we see a lot going on there. What are we looking at? Well, Greg and Terry, we're real happy to be with you. Uh, what you're looking at here is the Space Lab module that we have in the payload bay of the uh, shuttle Discovery. And let me call uh, some of our payload crew members, Norm Zaggert and Roberta Bonder, up forward, and they can give you a little idea of what's been going on. Well, Greg and Terry, this is a space lab mission, and that means science, so we've uh, been performing one of our vestibular experiments, and we'll break away from that and join Ron, I guess. Well, tell me, gentlemen, let's get your thoughts on today's game, since we've taken you away from your work temporarily. Well, actually, Greg, we were kind of hoping that Houston was going to be in today's game, but it looks like you've got a couple of great teams that are going to go at it. We're just sorry that uh, we don't have a way of receiving the game up here. And besides that, NASA's keeping us a little busy today. I've got to ask you this. How in the world are you going to keep tabs on the game, find out who's winning? Well, we think Houston will keep us pretty well informed. <laughs> you hope so. Anyway, here, how, is a, how would a coin toss work in zero gravity? Would that present some problems? Well, we thought about that. We hoped you'd ask, so we have a little demonstration here. I'm going to give the coin to Roberta Bonder here. She's our Canadian payload specialist. She knows a little more about Canadian football than American football, but nonetheless, she's interested, and we'll see about a zero-G coin toss. <laughs> I don't suppose we should call heads or... Looks like his head, Greg. <laughs> Terry and Greg, as you can see in zero G, the coin never comes down, so we'll just have to defer the coin toss with the official pregame ceremony. Well, we hope they'll keep you advised of what's happening, and we sure appreciate you having taken time out of your busy schedule. We wish you uh, a terrific mission and uh, and a happy touchdown next Wednesday. Thanks very much. We're delighted to have taken part. And, uh, uh, of course, we are looking for our fair share of touchdowns here today. Well, we've waited almost two and a half hours to say this. When we come back, our final thought. This way, this is Colony for Commander. Commander Van Grave. Roger, Claude. This is Discovery, Commander Ron Gravy speaking. Discovery, this is Mr. Luton speaking. Dr. Komolka, Dr. Rizanuber, and myself will speak in this order. Now, Dr. Komolka, sir. Discovery, yes, Komolka. Ich grüße den Commander Ron Green Grave und seine Crew von der SDS 42. Ja, danke sehr, Herr Präsident. Ich möchte Old Naples als äh, Mitglied unserer Besatzung vorstellen. Sie haben sicher ein paar, Vorst ein paar Fragen an ihn. Soweit ist es uns äh, gelungen, ein erfolgreiches äh, Flug zu haben. Und hier ist Rolf. Vielen Dank. Herr Mirbold, Sie sind der erste deutsche Astronaut, der aus dem Weltraum das Vereinigte Deutschland sieht. Mich interessiert besonders, welche Eindrücke Sie von Mecklenburg-Vorpommern haben dem Land des Ministerpräsidenten, ich bin. Ja, die letzte Runde um die Erdkugel sind wir über Mecklenburg-Vorpommern hinweggeflogen. Das ist jetzt gerade eine Stunde her. Und jetzt sind wir schon wieder über dem Atlantischen Ozean und werden in 20 Minuten über Südfrankreich fliegen. Es ist natürlich immer sehr schön, wenn man das eigene Heimatland aus dem Weltraum sieht, aber es dauert nur eine Minute, dann ist man nicht nur über Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, sondern über ganz Deutschland drüber hinweggeflogen. Herr Mirbold, ich weiß, dass Sie einen Teil Ihrer Freizeit opfern. Als kleines Äquivalent, ich lade Sie ein, nicht nur eine Minute, sondern eine Woche oder länger 
sich einmal das anzusehen, was Sie aus dem Weltraum betrachten können. Herzlich willkommen, schon hier. Hallo, Einladung. Hallo? Ja, Entschuldigung, dass ich Sie unterbrochen habe. Nein, ich wollte nur eine Einladung aussprechen und ich möchte Sie gleichzeitig bitten, bei der Gelegenheit auch die Satellitenempfangsstation in Neustrelitz zu besuchen. Ja, ja, einmal nehmen wir natürlich oder nehme ich gerne an und freue mich darauf, auch die Satellitenstation in Neustrelitz äh, zu, zu besichtigen. Vielen Dank. Herr Meerbold, hat sich Ihr Körper und Ihr Ihrer Kollegen schon an die Weltraumerfahrung gewöhnt. Wie ist Ihre Erfahrung jetzt? Ja, wir haben uns dazu alle schon sehr gut angepasst und ich sollte vielleicht auch noch hinzufügen, dass ich hier mit einer außerordentlich erfahrenen Crew, mit einer sehr erfahrenen Besatzung unterwegs bin. Hinter mir arbeitet der Norman Zeigert, er fliegt jetzt zum vierten Mal im Weltraum unter Commander von Gravy zum dritten Mal. Und wir haben noch einen zweiten, nämlich meinen Arbeitspartner Dave Hilmers, er ist auch schon zum vierten Mal im Weltraum unterwegs. Und es hilft natürlich, die Anpassungszeit zu verkürzen. Discovery with Mr. Litton speaking. Dr. Kamalka has finished. Now Dr. Rizalurga will speak. Discovery, this is Heinz Rieben, Rieben speaking. Um, Herr Commander, ich freue mich, dass Sie so ein ausgezeichnetes Deutsch sprechen. Und äh, meine besten Grüße und meine besten Wünsche gehen zu Ihnen und Ihren Kollegen. Dankeschön, das ist sehr nett von Ihnen zu sagen, aber auf einmal äh, habe ich gut äh, Deutsch sprechen können, aber das war eine lange Zeit vorher. Es ist schön, dass Deutsch eine selbstverständliche Sprache auch im Weltraum wird. Äh, Herr Meerbold, Danke. wir haben ja vor neun Jahren schon mal miteinander gesprochen, als Sie zum ersten Mal im Weltraum gewesen sind. Sie haben jetzt bei Ihrem Flug den größten Teil Ihrer Arbeiten erledigt. Und äh, was ich jetzt in den Gesprächen mit vielen Leuten höre, ist, was äh, erwarten Sie sich von den Ergebnissen? Hilft es uns, was Sie im Raum tun, hier auf der Erde, um unsere Arbeit voranzubringen? Ja, mit Sicherheit, äh die Missionen, an denen ich bis jetzt beteiligt war, die haben, sind immer sehr ergiebig gewesen, was die wissenschaftliche Ausbeute angeht. Und dieses Mal wieder, äh, wir haben sehr viele Experimente, die sich mit der menschlichen Physis beschäftigen, insbesondere mit dem Vestibularorgan. Außerdem äh, sind wir bestrebt, gute Einkristalle herzustellen aus Materialien, die auch große praktische Bedeutung haben als Röntgendetektoren oder Infrarotdetektoren. Und äh, ich bin persönlich optimistisch, dass äh, die meisten Experimente sehr gute Ergebnisse erbringen werden. Herr Meerbold, es ist ja über die einzelnen Experimente hinaus eine großartige Sache, wie sich eine internationale Partnerschaft entwickelt hat. Einer Ihrer Kollegen wird in sechs Wochen zur sowjetischen, zur russischen Raumstation hier fliegen. Und äh, in einem Jahr werden wir die nächste äh, D2-Mission haben. Wo sehen Sie eigentlich in der langfristigen Strategie aus der Distanz des Weltraums betrachtet die Möglichkeit, dass so eine internationale Zusammenarbeit hier uns helfen wird, auf der Erde friedlich zusammenzuleben und unsere Probleme zu lösen, die wir hier unten haben? Ja, das ist natürlich ein abendfüllendes Thema. Äh, meine amerikanischen Freunde und Kollegen und ich äh, genießen ja das Privileg, unseren Globus in 90 Minuten zu umrunden. Und äh, da werden die einzelnen Länder, aus denen wir kommen, eigentlich sehr irrelevant. Es ist äh, aus dieser Position sehr deutlich, dass wir auf einem Raumschiff durch den Weltraum fliegen, dem Raumschiff Erde. Und es ist deswegen unsere Überzeugung, dass es für uns alle die beste Verfahrensweise ist, wenn wir zusammenarbeiten, um die Probleme auf der Erde zu lösen. Und ich glaube, der Weltraum, der hat eine doppelte Bedeutung. Einmal eine philosophische, nämlich die Erkenntnis, dass wir alle zusammen 
Discovery Houston, that concludes the call. Great job. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Discovery Houston, we've got a good downlink video of you. Are you ready for your call from Canada? Houston, Discovery is ready for the call from Canada. Toronto, Houston. Please go ahead with your call. Discovery, this is Toronto for Commander Ron Gravy. Toronto, this is Discovery, Commander Ron Gravy speaking. Your voice quality is loud and clear. Good evening, Commander Gravy. This is Jay Ingram at the Ontario Science Center in Toronto. Prime Minister Brian Mulroney is standing by in Ottawa. And the Minister for Science, William Weingart, is with me right beside me here in Toronto. Congratulations to you and all your crew on a very successful flight so far. Well, Jay, on behalf of the entire crew of IML-1, we'd certainly like to thank you. Uh, we have been very fortunate so far. The flight's gone very well. We're very pleased with that. Uh, at this point, I would like to turn things over to and introduce uh, Dr. Roberta Bonder. Uh, Good evening, Jay. Hello, Dr. Bonder. Uh, to start things off, the Right Honorable Brian Mulroney, the Prime Minister, is waiting in Ottawa, and he's ready to speak with you right now. Good evening, Roberta, and uh, congratulations on becoming Canada's second space traveler. As you know, this is a year of celebration in Canada, our 125th birthday, and your flight has captured the imagination of all of your fellow Canadians 
probably in a way that you couldn't have imagined. And the success of this international mission has demonstrated to the world that anything can be achieved with dedication and cooperation. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to congratulate you on what you and your colleagues have achieved so far and to wish you all well. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. It's been a great an honor and a privilege to be on board this particular mission. Uh, we've had a great deal of science accomplished so far in this flight, and we still have a couple more days, we hope, uh, to be able to do a little bit more. We've enjoyed uh, being with each other and working with each other and learning new things about the world and about uh, how we work and how we view science. And it's just been a, a fantastic experience, and I just can't wait to get back and start telling people all about it. Roberta, I spoke earlier today with Ken Money, who told me that you had spent a little time just studying countries as they went by. And I understand that you caught a glimpse of Canada during your mission. What struck you most during the site? Well, at uh, lunchtime today, I had a tape on, I had a cassette tape on at the front, and I actually had a recording of all uh, that I had recorded for me before I came up here of O Canada. And I just happened to go up to the flight deck, and we were going right over Canada, and it was just fantastic. I, although it's wintertime, and we're going over the northern part of Canada, we went uh, across the Northwest Territories, down across uh, into uh, Quebec and Ontario, and you could certainly go back and you could recognize all the land features. Uh, it was just absolutely fantastic. There were no, very, very few clouds around. And I must say that uh, for people who think that our country, when it's wintertime, is not exciting, let me tell you, it's exceptionally exciting uh, from space, very, very clear. And uh, I just can't, in, if I, I wish I could just have a, a sit down and walk across every mile of this beautiful country because it just looks so exciting uh, from up here. It's just beautiful. Roberta, you are in space for already seven days. Is the life in space very different from the life on Earth? Because you came to say that un peu mon pays, c'est l'hiver. Oui, bien sûr, euh, il y a beaucoup de différences euh, dans l'espace. Par exemple, euh, pour euh, les rapports, euh, si vous voulez, euh, c'est possible de manger le yogourt, par exemple, mais c'est possible dans l'espace de jouer avec euh, la nourriture. Euh, par exemple, le, le, le yogourt, c'est comme ça. <rire> C'est pour euh, le repas, c'est nécessaire aussi de fixer euh, solidement sur euh, le mur, le plancher, le plafond. Sur n'importe quelle euh, quel surface, euh, on, peut, euh, on doit utiliser parce que c'est la même chose. Le mur, c'est la même que le, le plafond, le plafond, euh, c'est la même chose et c'est très intéressant. C'est excellent pour la diète. La diète, euh, ce n'est pas exactement comme euh, 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 la, la cuisine euh, francophone, mais euh, pour, euh, pour l'espace, euh, il y a les petites euh, bonbons euh, de sirop d'érable, par exemple. Roberta, les Canadiens de tout le pays ont suivi votre mission avec grand intérêt et pride. Je me demande si vous avez un message spécial message pour eux ce soir. Well, I think our country has much to be proud of uh, in terms of things we've accomplished uh, for our own country, especially in the field of science. I'm very, very proud, very proud to be a Canadian as part of this crew. And I think that all Canadians should be very pleased with the things that we do, different things, the variety of things we do, and the wonderful things that we share in our culture and our spirit. I think uh, our country has great potential. And I think it's up to each one of us to be sure that we achieve our potential, especially the young people. Well, Roberta, all Canadians are proud of you and what you've achieved, and I'd like to congratulate your other crew members as well uh, on this splendid achievement. And on behalf of all Canadians, uh, wish you all a very safe journey home. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Mr. Prime Minister, on behalf of the entire crew, thank you very much for those wishes. Dr. Bondar, this is uh, Jay Ingram back in Toronto again. Thank you very much, Mr. Mulroney. I have with me uh, the Honorable William Weingard, the Minister for Science, and I think he'd like to take over and talk to you now. Well, R Roberta, it, uh, it doesn't seem uh, possible that when you graduated from the University of Guelph <laughs> that all these years later we would be, have the opportunity to talk like this. <laughs> it is quite thrilling for us. 
I have 700, Thank you very much. 700 people in the Ontario Science Center, 200 of whom are children, many girl guides. They have asked me to ask you one special question. What's it like up there? <laughs> well, uh, it's very, very exciting. It's, um, it's really something to be able to just float around and drift around and just sort of at night time not worry about your pillow or your bed. And you have to have good buddies like uh, Commander Gravy here to grab you back down to worth a bit up here in space. But the most exciting part of it, besides working the science, is to be able to have some perspective on where we are in the world today and to be able to look down from space on a beautiful planet. There is a crisp, beautiful, clear, brilliant blue atmosphere that we see, and we see it all the time. We have been in the sunlight on the orbiter for days. We've never, we haven't had night for a while. We haven't had the darkness shine on the orbiter yet. And it has been absolutely incredible looking down and seeing all the countries without boundaries, everything blended into one. And you don't really you can't see people down there. Sometimes you can see the results of the work that people have done. But for the most part, you get this incredible feeling that the whole world is such a unique place and is all one. And we should try to preserve it that way. And I, I really feel very, very strongly that uh, we are certainly an all-one planet. Some of these children uh, uh, have also have an interest in the Canadian IMX, uh, IMX uh, motion picture camera. They want to know if it's still functioning well on its ninth journey into space. It's functioning very well. In fact, we've had a lot of fun taking some IMX footage of the work we've been doing here. Uh, Commander Graves is just going to come over and get a uh, film canister. This is what it looks like. Now, on Earth, of course, I wouldn't be able to lift it like this. But in space, it can float by itself. So we're trying to get footage up here on um, what it's like to actually live up here, the kind of science that we need to do in order to be able to understand what it's like to be in space and to help us solve some of those mysteries that we've discovered. And actually, what we've discovered in this site, there are a lot more mysteries that have to be looked into and questions raised and problems and experiments to solve in the future and years ahead. So I think that uh, for the IMAX filming, it's going to be most exciting to be able to see this laboratory hopefully on the screen one day and you'll be able to see more clearly the kinds of things we've been able to do in the last few days up here in space. Thank you. I might one last word for me, Roberta. I must say that uh, your uh, somersaulting on Sunday was much more interesting than the game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much, and I want you to know that Yankee tender and Canadian tender are worth uh, the same up here. <laughs> this is uh, Jay Ingram again, Dr. Bondar. Thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us, and thank you also, Commander Gravy, for setting, si setting time aside for us to be able to talk to you both from Toronto here, William Weingart and myself, and for the Prime Minister, Mr. Mulroney in Ottawa. Thank you very much. Discovery Houston, we have good down leak video from the lab. Be ready for the press conference on air to ground two. Houston Discovery, we're ready for the conference. Roger Discovery, stand by from the Marshall Press Center. Marshall, your go with your call. Discovery, this is the Marshall Press Center. We're ready to begin the press conference if you are. Good morning. Uh, I have a question for Dr. Uh, Bonder. We don't have too many Canadians in space, so I'd like to uh, start off with her. It's Mike Amelis from Broadcast News Canada. Dr. Bonder, I wonder if you could describe uh, those three hours sitting in the shuttle waiting to take off last Wednesday. What was it like? What were you thinking about? And then could you describe that ride up to the heavens? And we had, uh, were able to proceed with the countdown, and 
when we actually got to the, uh, the point of uh, liftoff, it was just absolutely wonderful to be on the uh, mid deck hearing the flight crew think marvelous, marvelous. Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for Roberta Bonder. Roberta, we know how much you were looking forward to looking down at the planet and, and out to the stars. Can you share with us just what your thoughts and feelings have been as you've done that? Well, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult to describe, and I think that's what everybody says. My impression of the planet Earth is uh, that certainly the title of Blue Planet is a good one because the crisp, uh, shiny, bright uh, jewel that we have, we could see the limb of the Earth when I uh, first got to the window. was one of the first things I wanted to do. And uh, it was uh, very, very exciting for me to be able to look down. And when I first uh, came over Canada, it was the biggest thrill imaginable, winter or no winter. It has to be, it's just absolutely beautiful and spectacular. And I, I'm coming back to Earth with a feeling that there is absolutely nothing boring. There is no boring place anywhere on this whole planet. Joanne Arcan de Radio-Canada, une question en français pour uh, le Dr. Bondar. Euh, docteur euh, Bondar, les scientifiques semblent très satisfaits du travail que vous faites actuellement. Est-ce que c'est véritablement un défi de faire des expériences euh, qui ont été préparées par 200 scientifiques? Vous excuse, M. Trout, est-ce que vous comprendre? Est-ce que c'est possible de répéter la question ou peut-être en anglais, si vous voulez? Bondar, Kevin Bissett from CFBC Radio in uh, St. John, New Brunswick. What's been the most difficult thing to adapt to in space? Again, it's uh, Kevin Bissett from CFBC Radio in St. John, New Brunswick. Dr. Bondar, if you could uh, tell us what's been the most difficult thing to adapt to in, uh, in space. from the Globe and Mail newspaper in Toronto. This is for Dr. Bondar. Um, I know you're working uh, on a book with your sister about the, uh, the science of the IML mission. Um, what will you put in the book now or emphasize uh, having actually flown that um, you might not have put in before?
Dr. Bonder, Yves Savory, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The question that you were asked in French, Dr. Bonder, you had said it was the biggest open book exam of your life. How has that played out? Well, it's, um, I, it was not an underestimation, let me tell you. When you first start up, uh, at least for me, here in the uh, space lab, when you first started up the series of experiments, you work with 20 palms because you know how much work the scientists have put into putting the experiments together. We only hope that the data that they're going to get back uh, from this space mission will be reflective of all our caring and effort that we put in up here. So in terms of uh, the open book exam, I hope that when we get back, we've all, we all get uh, four A's. The question will be directed to Dr. Bandar. My name is Réal Damour de Radio-Canada. Roberta, uh, vous avez uh, pratiqué, vous avez répété les expériences sur Terre pendant deux ans. Est-ce que ça se passe uh, comme prévu dans l'espace? Bonjour, Réal. Est-ce que c'est possible de répéter la question? Maintenant, je pense que c'est possible de vous écouter. Roberta, bonjour. Euh, vous avez répété pendant euh, deux ans ces expériences dans le Space Lab ici au Marshall Space Center. Est-ce que ça se passe de la même façon dans l'espace? Uh, at Marshall, uh, le lance de Mars est très bon, mais dans l'espace, uh, c'est très difficile de faire des expériences dans la même uh, période de temps. Uh, C'est-à-dire, uh, il faut utiliser beaucoup de temps pour faire des expériences euh, dans l'espace euh, que euh, sur la Terre euh, à Marshall. My name is Klaus Walter. I'm asking Ulf Merkel for ZDF German TV. Ulf, I first would like to ask you in English and switch to, uh, to German. After your first space flight, you spoke of the vulnerability of the planet Earth. Now, well, back into space, what do you think, how can we on Earth get profit out of the space and the conditions you found there. Wie oben im Weltraum vorgefunden haben, Ulf Meerbold, können wir uns auf der Erde denn in der Zukunft einmal zunutze machen? I think uh, there is uh, no question. Uh, space flight, from my perspective, has a lot of uh, potential. First of all, we use space as a unique laboratory and do experiments in all different uh, scientific areas, earth observation, material science, life sciences, and so on. And all the knowledge gained there uh, will help to make life on Earth better. In addition, space flight uh, requires, uh, let's say, high-tech approaches for that reason technology is stimulated. And a classical example of this kind is the Apollo program. I think uh, it stimulated tremendously the development of the integrated circuit because only very powerful but light and uh, um, very reliable computers allowed uh, the Americans to fly to the moon. In addition, there's also a philosophical dimension. It's for the first time in human history that we have the means and ends to leave the planet. And I think that will change our views. And therefore, there's no question in my mind that space life is important and uh, it would be a tremendous mistake not to do it. Daria Robinson of the European Space Agency. I have questions now from our press watching you <coughs> directly from Europe. The first one from Pete Smolder, Dutch space writer of Vara Television. Ulf, almost 10 years ago you made your first space flight. Is there a distinct difference between your personal experience then and now from a psychological and physiological point of view? Now my first flight, first flight was eight years ago. I think uh, I'm eight years older, but that makes it easier for me. Question from uh, Richard Schulman, Dutch space editor, Pers Uni, Pers Courant. What to to Ron Gravy? 
what has been the most exciting and unexpected event during this IML mission so far? Well, the most exciting event uh, for any space flight, I think, really has to be the ascent phase. The first eight and a half minutes, you're uh, really at the focal point of the unleashing of a lot of power. And uh, regardless of what happens after that, that's still got to be the most exciting thing that you're going to experience. From television again. Uh, Ulf Meerbold, do you think uh, that, in your opinion, should space exploration continue in national programs, or do you see any chance to get more cooperation instead of more competition, uh, even though uh, the cost will be reduced? Oh, my mind is very clear. I'm in favor of uh, cooperation. And I think the IMF flight, the flight we are on right now, is a classic example uh, for uh, cooper cooperative programs because uh, we have an international crew. We have experiments from many different nations. And I think uh, that is the way to do it. Was wünschen Sie sich denn von den deutschen Wünschen in Sachen Weltraumpolitik? Muss mehr für die Weltraumpolitik, für die Erforschung des Weltraums in Deutschland auch der Jugend beigebracht werden? Ich glaube, wir brauchen nur eine klare politische Linie beibehalten, und zwar in Richtung internationale Beteiligung an Weltraumprogrammen. Another question uh, for Ulf from Ralf Kupers from Raumfahrt Infodienst. After your second experience in space, what advice do you give to future colleagues who will be exposed on Columbus to long duration flights? Well, I think I'm not really in the position to give good advice because uh, if I'm lucky, I will spend 18 days in orbit, which is not a very long period of time. Uh, I think uh, the best people to give advice are the Russians. Ulf, was war für Sie denn jetzt der größte Unterschied im Gegensatz zu Ihrer ersten Mission? Ja, die erste, die erste Mission, die ist für mich etwas aufregender abgelaufen als die zweite. Ja, aber ich glaube, das ist immer so im Leben. Das zweite Mal ist dann schon etwas mehr Routine dabei. This is uh, Brian Magruder with the CBS Television Affiliate in Huntsville, Alabama. This is for any of the crew members who've been experiencing the sickness in the rotating chair. Did you have that problem when you attempted the uh, rotating chair on Earth and why do you suppose you are experiencing the sickness problems now? Okay, well, somehow I managed to get this one. The, uh, the rotating chair can be a challenge uh, at times, but I think in general we've been able to, uh, to get through most of it. A lot of folks, probably about two-thirds of folks, are a little bit queasy on the first couple of days. Uh, Any time you're doing any any motion, it tends to exacerbate it. The chair induces motion, so as you might understand, it also exacerbates any queasiness you're having. Good morning. I'm Kerry Martin from the NBC affiliate here in Huntsville, Alabama. Lieutenant Colonel David Hilmers, I read that you've become fairly uh, relaxed in this uh, uh, nauseating motion experience uh, experiment. Um, what is your mindset going into some of these experience, uh, experiments? Are you uh, personally and genuinely interested, or is it more like a giant playground where, where you get to play with the toys, and do you leave the interpretation for the doctors and scientists here on Earth? I'm not sure I heard all the, the questions. Uh, there was something about me being relaxed going into the experiments. Uh, I actually have found the MDI experiment to be uh, uh, one that I have difficulty sometimes staying awake during. And uh, I, I found myself today trying to sing the uh, Marine Corps hymn or any other song that uh, has a lively beat to try to stay awake. But I find it uh, kind of relaxing. Uh, I enjoy the medical aspects. 
and the physiological aspects of the uh, data and what it might provide for a future basis for solving some of the problems that we have uh, going into space. And I look forward a great deal to finding out what the results will be. We've all put a lot of effort into uh, training for this and here on orbit, riding the chair. And when we get back home, we're not finished yet. We still have a few more days of uh, data collection to take yet. So uh, we're going to be most interesting to see, interested in seeing whether our uh, results will be as fruitful as all the work that we put into it. Robert Donovan with the Birmingham News. I've been impressed by the bilingual international crew aspect of this. When are we going to begin to see some Russians up there with you? And do you have any ex influence you can exert? You're going to try to do that. Question. This is Klaus Walter from German Television CDF again asking Ulf Meerbold. Herr Meerbold, glauben Sie denn, dass die Raumfahrt eines Tages auch mal zu einem wichtigen Hilfsmittel in der Politik werden kann? Sprich, dass man praktisch aus der Ferne heraus die Erde näher zueinander bringt durch gemeinsame Raumfahrtprogramme? Einmal ein wichtiges Hilfsmittel der Politik werden, ein noch wichtigeres Hilfsmittel der Politik werden, um die Erde enger zusammenzubringen. That concludes uh, the questions from the Marshall Press Center. Stand by now for questions from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Bill Harwood with UPI and CBS. Uh, for Ron Gravy, uh, there's been a lot of talk lately about long-range goals in NASA, and I'm wondering uh, how important is it, uh, in your opinion, for NASA to have a clearly defined long-range goal off the planet? Do you think the, the agency has suffered in recent years without one? And for Steve Oswald, how's the view of Puget Sound and Bellingham?
and so far I've been completely out of phase with uh, when the weather was good in Puget Sound. I've been working back in the lab, and when it hasn't been uh, busy in the lab, it's been cloudy over Puget Sound, which is, I guess, not uncommon for this time of year. Uh, this is Marcia Dunn with the Associated Press. For either the commander or Dr. Thagard, both of you indicated yesterday you wanted to keep some uh, light workloads on the extra day in space. Are you being overworked up there, and do you feel it's taking a toll? Every, if I could break in momentarily, well, we we'll be LOS in one minute. Yeah, Pick you up at 0857. We don't think we're being overworked. As a matter of fact, I think both shifts uh, from time to time have asked for some more stuff to keep busy. We are concerned, however, that we have to do baseline data collection on R plus zero, and traditionally crews are pretty tired. 